Hi, my name is Tel Koenderink and I'm the founder and master trainer of Novelo, where we help schools, teachers and parents create a place for talent and gifted kids. Hey, what I want to talk to you about today is the goal of talent education. Because I get into so many arguments, or I, I used to, since I've developed this model, this has helped me a lot, on, you know, oh, these kids, they've got too much talent. And then we're going to spend extra money creating special programs for them. Why would we? You know, having too much talent is like having too much money. It's a luxury problem. Well, not quite. I mean, for one, research is showing that, you know, up until IQ 125, your school's results go up. But from 125 and up, your school's results on average go down and your chances of finishing a university degree go down the higher your IQ is. So that's a weird statement. But the way I look at it, there are six goals in gift and talent education. At the lowest level, it starts with kids no longer being depressed. And this really bugs me that this is still a goal that's not being met. Some kids, as a consequence of education, are feeling worse, are getting depressed because they're not being reached at the level they're at. And we really, every kid deserves well-being. Feeling good about himself, feeling good about himself and his place in school, feeling good about himself and his place in society, that is the core goal. And as long as that's not reached, I don't think there's any amount of money enough to be invested in these kids. Every kid deserves this. This is why they're must be specialty programs. But then at the next level we get two other problems. Productivity. Probably you know one of these gifted kids who sits there, looks at his paper but gets nothing done. He doesn't get through it. He's not capable of finishing his work. Why? Because he hasn't learned the skills to, ch to turn his talent into practice. And that's really a shame. I think that's really important too, as long as a kid doesn't kind of start living up to his potential, that's such a, a waste of human potential. And then on the other hand, you've got the core curriculum. In Holland, and probably in most countries in the world, it's the case that if a kid's well-being is reasonably well and he's reasonably productive, the law states that you need to meet the core curriculum. And a lot of kids aren't doing that, underperforming, they call it absolute underperformance, where you're not even making normal marks, which is weird. You've got an IQ of 140 and you can't get a normal passing mark where the rest of the classroom can. You need help in that. That's also a reason. Like These four reasons are really a core reason why there needs to be gifted education, to make sure that nobody gets below this threshold. Then you get the higher end, the plus goals. You can define them in two areas. You've got content goals and skill goals. And to be honest, you know, what I see in 9 out of 10 enrichment programs is when you ask them, what do you do? They say, well, we do Spanish and French and, you know, Latin, or we do additional IT computer skills. We do this and this and this. But it's mostly designed around content. We do this program, we do this program. Well, the thinking should be, we teach these skills. I think skills are the goal, because I think they're the goal of entire education, but especially of gifted education. We want to send these kids off with a bunch of skills. And we don't give them Spanish and French because we think they should learn to speak Spanish and French. Most kids won't even use it in a lifetime. But by learning French, they learn how a language works. They learn to reflect on their own language. They learn learning skills, you know, how do I memorize stuff? How do I apply it? How do I analyze text and stuff like that? Those are useful skills. So in my idea, a policy letter should always start with, you know, these are the skills that we're trying to teach. And this is the content we're using to teach those skills. Can you see, see the difference between the two? And this is also a way of measuring your progress. Because I think it's really important to set priorities. Because if you're a teacher, and in most countries, you know, when you're a teacher, you've got at least 30 kids in your classroom, and a lot of programs like um, Together to School in Holland and No Child Left Behind are putting more and more problem kids into the normal classroom. So you've got 30 kids, but one has HDHD, two have got dyslexia, and maybe one is kind of like autistic, 
and then you've got the gifted kid there as well and you need to cater to all of them that's challenging and you need to know where your priorities are because are your priorities in making them productive or making sure that nobody is depressed or making sure that you're adding the extra content by creating priorities you say first we're going to make sure nobody's depressed in the classroom and then we're going to make sure they're all you know well-being and productive then we're going to make sure they're meeting their core curriculum and then we're going to help them develop additional skills but this way you've got an order of doing things and when you get a new group you know what to do so think about it and this can be your own work think about what is the goal in your school or with your kid of talented education cool think about it because it really gives you a head start if you want the addition to this make sure you look at the movie about policy making because it puts it into a larger perspective thank you so much for watching make sure you apply this and as always bring out the best in yourself and in each other